Hey guys and welcome back. If you're a tennis player who's ever struggled with the mental side of your game, regularly finding yourself up in a match and then ending up losing it, or don't really know where to start when it comes to improving the mental side of your game, well in this video I'm going to show you one of the most simple ways to chart matches that can help you to gain more information about the mental side of your game and how you're affected by momentum and match flow. In this video I'm going to be watching one of my tennis matches that I played against Cameron and I'll be talking through my thoughts whilst charting the match just to show you how easy it is is to use this form of charting so that you can go out and use it for yourself whether you're a coach working with a player or if you're a parent trying to chart your child or even if you're a player and you want somebody else to chart your game it's a fantastic tool to help you with your tennis so let's check it out So a couple of things before I get started. I mentioned before, I'm gonna make a mini series on match charting. So this is potentially one of a few different videos because there are tons of ways that you can chart tennis matches to get different things or different information from the matches that you want. This method in particular is probably the most basic, but it gives a lot of information with regards to how the player performs in a match environment, whether they play best when they're up or best when they're down, whether they're good at coming back, whether they get nervous in certain situations. So all of these things we can tell from this simple little chart that we're going to do. Now, as I said before, I would normally chart on a piece of paper with a pen, but just the fact that I'm at home in my office, I've got access to the iPad and it looks pretty cool on the video. So I'm gonna do it on my iPad, but you can do it on paper and with a pen. You don't need grid paper, although if you want to be super neat and tidy, grid paper will help you with this form of charting. I call this form of charting match flow charting. And all you need to do is draw a line down the left-hand side of your page and a line across the center of your page as far as it can go. You're going to write the names of the two players that are competing along the side. So in this case, it's Ash, that's myself, versus Cam. All you're going to do is you're going to draw a line in the direction of who won the point. So for example, if I win the first point, then I would draw a line going up in my direction. If Cameron wins the next point, we do a line in his direction. If he were to win again, we do another line in his direction. And if he won another one, and so on. If I win the last point here, go up. And it's as simple as that. After a few points, you'll start to be able to see where the momentum swings are and where the turning points are. Now, although you can get an awful lot of information just by drawing out this basic chart, you can also add information so that you have even more robust feedback. And I'll show a few examples of this when I watch the match with Cameron in a second. So let's check it out. So we're gonna jump straight into this match after the first game. So it's one love to me and I am serving. Obviously when you're charting, you'll have time in between each point to make your chart or make your notes. But I've cut that out of this so that it's not too boring for you. Okay, so I won the first point, so we'll go up in my direction after the first point. Same again, point number two, I won, so I'll move up in my direction. Point to cam. Another point in my favor. and another one. So what I like to do here is I like to split each game and I draw a little tennis ball to show who was serving. So we'll see in the first game I was serving, now Cam serving, there'll be a tennis ball down here. It's good to gain as much information as you can within the time that you have. So Cameron won the first point so we'll come down here. Point for me. 
So you'll see that it started to rain quite heavily now. So if we make a note of this, it could play a factor towards momentum changes. wide so a point for me again okay so you can see there that was a double fault so I'm just going to make a note of that because I'm also going to put a minus for some negative body language from Cam I like to put a plus for positive body language and a minus for negative body language just to show how that can impact the next few points. Okay, same again. You probably didn't see there, but uh, that was a, a double fault and another negative body language. So we've got another line down here for the next game. Nice. So you can see here I'm starting to run out of paper space, but that's fine. Hopefully, you know, you can use a slightly bigger notepad or make your increments slightly smaller. So Cam won that point. Nice. Come on that point as well. I'm going to put a W for winner. That can often create a bit of positivity, a bit of a momentum swing. I think there may have been a winner on the point before, but we'll look back at that afterwards. Okay, so double fault from me. So I'll put double fault. Chance there for Cam. See him getting frustrated, but he's still smiling, so I wouldn't really count that as negative body language. I think it was just a bit of venting. Okay, another point for Cam. Another break point. Wow. Big. Oh, man. Okay, so that's another Three game. Months. So we'll stop it after this game because I think you probably get the gist. But as you can see, you're starting to see some really good visuals here as to how the match flow went throughout the match. Um, we only played a few games and obviously over the period of a set and a match or even multiple matches, you can start to build a good picture as to how certain players cope in different situations. So you can see here when it started raining heavily, it actually worked in my favour and I won one, two, three, four, five, six points in a row. Now six points in a row is, is quite impactful. It's a game and a half straight. So for momentum, you could see that the momentum was clearly in my favour. But you'll notice here at the peak, Cameron hits two winners in a row, which kind of brings that momentum back in his favour. And I also hit a double fault. So you can see how this graph has changed all of a sudden. So I was three love up, everything was going in my favour, and halfway through this fourth game, things started to change. So what do we get from this graph so far? It's only a few games, but the rain could have made a difference. There are a couple of double faults during that period as well, which didn't help Cameron. But the turning point that we saw here so far was two clean winners. It would be interesting to get this over a longer period of time, over the, over the period of a set or maybe two sets, 
but if you want to see the end of this set, I'll put the link above so that you can watch the rest of it. But by looking at this graph right now, it's looking like Cameron has managed to swing that momentum. And although he's 3-1 down, he's got a really good chance of clawing back another couple of games. What's really nice about this type of charting is that you can chart it in any way you like. If there's something in particular that you want to look out for, it might be first serve percentage. If that's the case, then every time the players serve, you can put one if it's their first serve was in, two if their second serve was in, or DF if it was a double fault. That way, over the period of a set, you'll know exactly how many points were played with a first serve, how many with the second serve, how many with double faults, and out of those points, which ones were won and which ones were lost. Alternatively, you could also track unforced errors versus winners. You could track rally length. All of these sorts of things you can do with this format. The one thing that all charting methods have in common is you've got to concentrate during the point and use the period of time in between points to make your notes or to make your charts. So there you go. I hope you found that interesting and I hope that you find this charting method super useful. I definitely have during my times that I've been watching my players compete at various tournaments. It's really given me some tangible evidence to help them when they get on the practice court. Understanding what sorts of things can be turning points for your players can help you massively when it comes to helping their mental skills. And like I said right at the start of the video, if you are a parent it's a fantastic tool for you as well because it's a way for you to chart matches without getting into the technical and tactical details. If your child does have a coach and you can give them this information it's going to be massively beneficial to their coaching sessions. I know what you're all thinking, who won that set? Now if you've watched the video before you'll already know but if you haven't I'll put the link to the rest of the set in the description below. Thanks again for watching, really hope you found it useful. If you did be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel to see future videos. Take care.